This is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about factoring your receivables and how to record it in QuickBooks. And of course the first question is why would you want to do that? And that is an excellent question because if I get a call from a client and they tell me that they need my consulting help and they tell me that the core issue is that they're factoring their receivables, I cringe. I'm like, hey, I don't want that client. Why? Because it's a lot of headaches. It's a pain. The accounting for factoring your receivables is a big pain in the neck. Uh, what's worse is I have yet to come across a single factor that actually provides you with helpful reports. Usually the reports are very unclear as to how the money is flowing you know what they paid how they paid it how it all adds up usually it's like the factors just want to take a lump sum in it and, and they want you to just take their word for it that these invoices were paid and that's that and now then try calling them and asking them for clarification you will get a series of extremely annoyed people on the phone that has consistently been my experience with every single factor that I have ever worked with through my clients so I'm teaching you this because it comes up and I think it's valuable for you to know how to do it. At the same time, I'm warning you, don't ever do it unless you really absolutely have no other choice. So let's take a look at what it looks like. There are essentially um, four components when you're factoring the receivables that you need to be aware of. The first thing is that the initial payment from the factor is nothing more than a loan from them to you. And, and in terms of the accounting, that's all it is. You're not going to post any payments on any invoices. You're just going to receive the money and you are going to record a loan and you're going to re they're going to take fees out. So you're going to record the fees. That's the first component. The second component is that they will give the second payment, which will pay off the invoices it will absorb whatever loan you have uh, effectively taken from them. They will take their fees out and then sometimes they withhold monies. So now you have a receivable. Okay, so this is why it gets very sticky when it comes to factoring your receivables. And, and those are the four components really. You have the loan, you have the fees, you have a payable, and you have a receivable. And so this is where it gets, it's almost like quadruple entry bookkeeping. And the factors, I think, intentionally make it much more complicated than it ever needs to be. Now, what you're going to see here is an overly simplified version of it so that it'll be easy to understand. But be aware that when you get into this in the real world, you're going to be dealing with probably a much more complex version of the same thing. And, and really by more complex, what I mean is that there's going to be a lot more invoices involved. So it's going to be harder to, a little harder to follow in the real world. And I was hired by a company not too long ago to clean up a situation which they'd made a mess of accounting-wise in terms of factoring their invoices. And I ended up getting into a dispute with the client because they felt that it should take only three hours to complete the cleanup work, even though I sat side by side with the client working on it while she watched me and she saw that it took more than three hours to do. So we had a big dispute over the bill and the funny thing is she still wanted me to continue working with her and to this day I'm sure she's still wondering why I no longer take her phone calls. But that's another issue for another screencast on another bright sunny day. Meanwhile, take a look at what this looks like. So first of all, why would you want to do this? The only reason you ever factor your receivables is you need them for cash flow. So usually you're talking about companies that deal in high dollar volume sales where a single invoice might be you know, very large dollars and they start adding up very quickly into the neighborhood of you know, 100,000 plus. And when you have that much in receivables outstanding and you're a smaller business, you may need the money right away for cash flow. The bank's unwilling to make a working capital line of credit available to you or a loan for that matter. So you really, again, factoring is a last resort. It's a measure of last resort. You don't do it unless uh, not doing it means really going out of business because you don't have the money to pay for your working capital needs and you can't wait for as long as it's going to take for your customers to pay you. It means I need the money, I need it right now. So looking at an example of some invoices, I've made it very generic. Didn't even use my usual always right incorporated. Just did customer one, customer two, customer three. So let's say I've agreed to factor the receivables. And by the way, many factors require when you sign their agreements that you essentially agree to sell them all of your receivables. It's not like you can pick and choose and say, well, I'll just sell you these three. You have to sell them everything. A lot of times that's how they work. 
So, what's going to happen? So, I agree to sell my factor $197,400 in receivables. Let's put that up on a spreadsheet here. Factored receivables. 197400 A lot of times what they'll do is they'll pay me for half of that up front. And that's essentially the loan they're going to make me. So, 50%, right? But then they're going to take a fee out right away. So let's say that fee is, you know, they're not going to charge you cheap interest because, you know, they, the whole idea of this is, remember, you're desperate. You need this money badly. So let's just say they take 10% flat on this. Now, 10% doesn't seem like a lot, but when you consider that it's one time on this amount, if you annualize that, it, it can get high. So... The net loan on the initial transaction is going to be 90000 of course. Sorry, 88830 So this is going to be the net loan. How do we book this in QuickBooks? It's really very simple. They're going to fund us that money. They're going to fund us $88,830. So it's just a, we're just going to record a deposit. Uh, I got to create a bank account real quick on this sample set of books. Okay, come into the deposit, and we have an, a, a current liability account called Loan from Factor. Right, the total loan amount has to be recorded. This is what has to be recouped by the factor. The total loan amount is not the eighty-eight eight thirty; it's the ninety-eight seven hundred. That's what they're loaning us. Fifty percent of what we factored up front. So we have to put that whole amount in there, 98700 Then we deduct the factor fee. And you can even create an expense account called factor fees. Set that up as an expense. Continue. Minus, we said, 9870 So now you can have a negative line item in a deposit. Going to an expense account, it will increase the expense. Because in effect, since a deposit normally increases cash, <coughs> excuse me, that's a debit to cash, um, a negative line item in a deposit has the effect of reducing cash, credit to cash, debit to whatever account goes here. So we're debiting an expense account for an increase. We're increasing expense called factor fees by putting the negative line item there. Save and close. So now what happens? We have the $88,830 sitting in our bank account we have a loan from the factor in the form of a liability, of course, for 98700 And if I run my profit and loss, I have my factor fees of $9,870. That's just on the first payment. That's just the first payment, ladies and gentlemen. So now what happens is, and notice I did nothing to the invoices. I, the invoices are still all sitting out there as unpaid invoices. So, what do we do next? Next, the factor comes in and they the factor gets paid by our clients, right? So when they get paid by our clients, they pay us the difference. Now, again, I'm going to show you a very simplified version of this because I'm going to assume that all the clients pay in full by the next reporting period from the factor. Normally what's going to happen is you're going to get paid maybe one of these invoices and one of these invoices. And again, the factors will give you these sort of long, complicated reports, but you have to find a way to go through the reports and break it down in a way that looks like what I'm showing you here. And what I've had to do in some cases is get on the phone with the factor and in a sense force them and say, your numbers don't make sense. I need you to explain to me, you know, and, and sometimes I have to break it down this simply. I have to say to them, your report shows that you funded us. You know, 88,830. I need to know exactly how you arrived at that number. I need to know what invoices were included in that, what fees were taken out. It's, it's so simple the way they could lay it out. I, and I, I just, I can only guess it's intentional that they don't do it that way because they probably don't really want you to be aware of, you know, how much, how, how sort of usury their, their finance charges are, you know, and how unconscionable it is what they're charging you, you know, to borrow money for a very short term period of time. I think factors are, you know, only like a, a small step away from being loan sharks. That's just my little personal rant on this. Um, again, I don't like them. I don't like when companies do it. I don't like the accounting of it. I think it's a mess. So 
what will happen next? Next, what will happen is, let's just say, like I said, to keep it simple for the purposes of this video, let's say they come in and pay all the invoices. So now the factor comes in and says, okay, your customers have all paid us. Good luck with that. 197400 All the money comes in. So they're going to, in theory, again, this is how simply they could lay it out. They're going to say all invoices paid, right, minus what they already gave you, less loan made so subtract 98,700 okay and then uh, another factor fee so let's say subtotal this is all they'd have to do um, that's not the loan this is what they effectively loaned us subtotal so because it was 50% then we need a factor fee right so let's say that's another 10 percent okay and then we'll make that negative so the math is easy net funding this is as simple as they could make it if they wanted to but they just choose not to because they're just mean terrible nasty people those receivables factors so we're getting another 88,830, right? Because we're getting the other 50%. Keep in mind, it's never going to be this simple in real life. I'm just trying to give you an example that's easy to follow so that when you see the real life, you can kind of think in terms of this and try and translate it to what you're going to be seeing there. So the question is how to book this in QuickBooks because here's what happens. I have to show these invoices as paid even though I didn't get this amount right here, right? So there's a few steps that we have to do. And this is where I like to teach people that when you receive money, when you're in your customer payment screen, we this is where people get tripped up because they think, well, I don't, I'm not getting the whole 38000 for this invoice, so how can I put in that amount? And the answer is you have to divorce your thinking from thinking that this is merely a means of capturing the customer uh, customer payment. You have to think of it kind of a little bit deeper in terms of thinking that this is the screen in which I give the customer credit for having paid their invoice in full, regardless of how much I received. That's the thing is we get stuck with the idea that what I put in here has to be what I received. It doesn't. What you put in here has to be what the customer needs to get credit for having paid you. So let's put in customer one. So in other words, forget about what you actually received for a minute and just put in 53,400. We're giving the customer credit for having paid everything. Payment method, you can add a new one, call it factor, whatever you want to put in here. It's really not that important to me. Save a new customer two. So you have to go through the factors report to see which invoices have been paid and give those customers credit for having paid their invoices in full. Remember, this is on the second payment. And then we'll go to customer three. 46400 paid in full. Save and close. The invoices are gone. The money is sitting, if I run a balance sheet report, the money is now sitting in undeposited funds. I've got the whole 197400 but we know that I've only received half of that. So here's where I show customers of mine who have factored their invoices how to keep it real simple. I'm just going to go into the make deposit screen now. I'm going to grab all of this money, select all. I'm just pulling it out of undeposited funds to stick it in the deposit form because i got to clear it out of undeposited funds. Now here's where I deal with the rest because now I have to deal with the reconciliation of this 197400 to this 88830. And so we're going to go down my list. So the first thing is I have to deal with the loan. I have to clear out the loan account, right? So loan from factor is going to be minus how much was it the original loan 98700 right that takes care of half and then I have a factor fee again minus another 9870 88830 so of course when you see it the way I do it it makes it really simple so the second payment just to talk about it conceptually for a minute the second payment, I'm going to grab in all the monies for all the invoices that have been paid, even though I've received much less than that at this point. And then I'm going to add essentially two other line items into the deposit. How much of the loan is being repaid and how much of a fee is there? Now here's what happens. Sometimes 
there's still another deduction because sometimes the factor, especially if there's ongoing invoices coming in and out, sometimes the factor will hold money back, okay? In which case, at this point, I say do from factor minus, and they do this as almost like, you know, almost like um, a security deposit against future receivables that need to be collected. So they'll withhold another $10,000, let's say. And again, sometimes that amount, that figure is sort of buried in their report, hard to see. And I think that's intentional. They don't want you to see that because they know people are going to start calling up and saying, why didn't I get all of my money? So at that point, if they've withheld money based on invoices that they collected full payment on, then that's, that becomes a receivable. So remember at the beginning, I said you have a payable and a receivable, and you have the fees, and you have the loan. Okay? The loan and the payable, of course, being really one and the same. So now we have to take that difference and stick it in a receivable account, call it due from factor. Save and close. Now I go to my balance sheet. They owe me $10,000 now. I paid $19,740 in factor fees based, of course, on 10% of the income that they collected on my behalf and that they effectively loaned me. So for a loan of really, the only money they're ever lending me is like 50% of what I factored. The rest they're not giving me until they've actually collected. And they're taking all these fees out. This is why I think factoring is sort of like for the dregs of society who... Uh, not that the I, I'm not faulting the customer. You know, you need to do it if you need to do it to you know keep your business alive and make your payroll and make sure your employees get paid. But like I said, it's an option of last resort. You never want to do this unless you really have absolutely no other choice. So my friends, this of course is the simplest uh, video I can give you on how to handle factored receivables in QuickBooks. This is also the last video you'll be seeing done in QuickBooks 2012. Everything from here on out will be done in QuickBooks 2013, starting, of course, with my initial tutorials on QuickBooks 2013. What's new? It's got a completely different look, so stay tuned, check back, email me for more information, seth at nerdenterprises.com. Visit me on the web at www.nerdenterprises.com. And give me a call if you'd like additional information about private training. 866-945-8070 or consulting. We can get it done for you or we can teach you how to do it. As always, I hope you're having an absolutely spectacular day and I look forward to seeing you on the web.